Hey, Way family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you, so go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the, uh, a, a concept that keeps coming up over and over in the Bible. The, the concept is being thankful giving thanks. Comes up from Old Testament all the way to New Testament. It's reaffirmed over and over and over and teaching us how to be thankful. And now it's easy, it's pretty easy to be thankful when, you know, when things are going pretty good. I'm sure we all have a lot of things to be thankful for right now. Some of us would say I'm thankful for my family or I'm thankful for that I get to lay my head down at night or I'm thankful for the meals I get to eat. But what about when you're facing a low point when you're facing a disaster, or when you're facing a situation that looks like there's no way out. What about in those moments there? Are you thankful then? Now tonight's message isn't to get us to think about all the great things that are going on, and, and we're going to give God praise for all the great things, but tonight we're going to learn how to be thankful even in the difficult times. Tonight we're going to learn how to be thankful even when it gets hard. Tonight, we're going to learn how to be thankful when it looks like there's no other way out. See, there's something that happens when we start to give thanks. Miracles follow thanksgiving. Come on. Miracles follow thanksgiving. Somebody say it with me. Miracles follow thanksgiving. See, there's something that happens when we take an attitude of thanksgiving, when we take a grateful heart towards all the things that God has done. Now, I know sometimes in life it might be kind of hard to find things because you got 101 things to complain about, but maybe half a thing to be thankful for. Well, what God wants you to do in that very moment is pretend like those 101 things aren't even existing and fix your eyes on the one thing to be thankful for and thank God for that thing right then and there. I know it's not easy. I know the enemy wants your attention at all times, but what God is doing when he gets us to have a heart full of gratitude as he sets us up for a miracle to come like we've never seen before. How many believe that tonight? Tonight, I'm going to show you three biblical principles, three principles or three stories in the Bible where we see miracles follow Thanksgiving, where we find that when someone is thankful, even in times of distress or disaster or even tragedy, that God shows up in a mighty way and miracles follow. Are you guys with me? So this scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. See, we already know how to be thankful for the good things in life, but tonight we're going to learn how to be thankful when we're in times of need. Usually in times of need, we're asking, asking, asking. What God wants us to do is learn how to be thankful, thankful, thankful in those times. See, nothing causes someone to be more cold and bitter than losing the heart of thanksgiving. So when we lose a heart of thanksgiving, it causes us to become cold towards God. We stop depending on him like we do. We stop leaning on him for the things that, that he shows up for every single day in our lives. It says in Romans 1.21, yes, they knew God. How many know God in here? It says, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. These are people who knew God. These are people who experienced and encountered God. And this is a community of people who said, they stopped thanking God. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. And as a result, their minds became dark and confused. Tonight, we're going to snap out of that darkness. Tonight, we're going to remember what God has done for us. Tonight, we're going to be thankful for how much God has done for us. And we're going to be thankful for all the great things to come. See, nothing brings more joy, nothing restores more peace in our lives than bringing someone back to a place of thanksgiving. I know that we've had a bad habit. We, we're professional complainers. We can, we can make a living out of it. But what God is saying, I need to bring you back to a place of being thankful. And believe me, the peace and the joy and the hope that you've been lacking is all going to be restored once we finally start being thankful for the things God has given us. God, I'm thankful that I'm here tonight. God, I'm thankful for this cold rain because I know it's good for the 
good for California. God, I am thankful for my life. God, I am thankful for my car. I know it breaks down every other block, but it gets me from point A to point B. God, I'm thankful for this meal. I know it's only top ramen, but God, I am thankful for it. God, I am thankful for my job. My, my workers, my coworkers are complaining. My boss is rude, but God, I thank you for my boss because you're, my boss is teaching me how to be patient. God, I thank you, Lord, for all the great things that you've done for me. God, I thank you I woke up today. God, I thank you I have two legs. I, Lord, Lord, I thank you I could praise you. I thank you I could worship you. I thank you I could stand here and lift your name up, God. I thankful, I'm thankful I have my mind still. God, I was out there in the world doing drugs and drinking and lost and abandoned, but God, I thank you, Lord, that I can lift your name up at a moment's notice, and I could give your name praise, and you smile in heaven knowing, Lord, that I'm your child. God, I thank you. I thank you. See, just even saying thank you puts this joy back within us. When you say thank, thank you to God, you can't focus on all the negative. It's impossible to be so focused on the negative when you're thanking God. Let's all practice this. Say, God, thank you. Say it again. Say, God, thank you. One more time. God, thank you. Just saying thank you does wonders already. Just like Pastor Marco said, I wonder what kind of provision is on the other side of your thank, thank you. I wonder what miracle is getting ready to be released in your life because we finally have a posture of thankfulness to God. Tonight we're going to learn how to be thankful in those moments. These three cases or these three uh, scenarios in the Bible, these stories, these real life stories that happen in scripture are going to teach us how to be thankful. The first thing we're thankful for, God, we, let's say this together. Say, thank you for freedom. Listen to this story. This was shared by Billy Graham about a man who was thankful in all circumstances. It says, the next footsteps in the corridor, he knew, might be those of the guards taking him away to his execution. His only bed was the hard, cold stone floor of the dark, cramped prison cell. Not an hour passed when he was free from the constant irritation of the chains and the pain of the iron manacles cutting into his wrists and legs. Separated from friends, unjustly accused, brutally treated. If ever a person had a right to complain, it was this man, languishing, almost forgotten in a harsh Roman prison. But instead of complaints, his lips rang with words of praise and thanksgiving. That man was the Apostle Paul, a man who had learned the meaning of true thanksgiving, even in the midst of great adversity. Turn with me to Acts chapter 16, verse 22. This is a story of a man that you just heard right there, who was falsely accused of something that was, he shouldn't have been in prison for. And he found himself beaten, tortured, and hurt. A mob, it says in, starting at verse 22, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials then stripped and, and uh, 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 the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten. And then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. See, this is the worst of the worst. I don't know how much worse it can get than this right here. See, conditions could not have been worse for Paul and Silas. There was a, was a crazy mob, okay, a crazy mob, which means that everybody was against them. They're, they were stripped, which means they were humiliated before people that they were leading. They, they, they were beaten, which means they were physically injured. Physically, they couldn't, they, they were just hurt. And, and not only that, they were imprisoned. They had nowhere to go. And they also had these clamped feet in the stocks, which means there was absolutely no way of escape for them. And I don't know how many of us have ever felt like we're in that position, where there's absolutely no way of escape. Like, with, there's a crazy mob outside of our lives. Like, everybody's against us. It, it seems like we're physically taking a beating every single day and every week in and out. It seems like we're in prison and we just can't break through. It seems like it's the worst of the worst situation and condition that we could be in. But somehow, some way, Paul and 
and Silas were still able to keep thanksgiving coming out of their mouth in a situation that looked like we should not be thanking God for. And that they were still able to praise God. They were still able to give him thanks. See, who would actually be thankful in that situation? Well, these two were. But only with the power of the Holy Spirit were they able to muster up the strength enough to pray and sing praises to God in a situation where they were being beaten and humiliated. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit. And tonight, the power of God is going to be able to help us be thankful in those times of need. Look, don't be discouraged in those times. Don't feel like those are times where God leaves you. Those are times where God teaches you. Those are moments where God lifts us up and encourages us. Those are moments where God shows us how to be men and women of God that can withstand anything. See, I know Paul and Silas, they were able to go through anything after that. Why? Because that was the worst of the worst, and they were being thankful for that. God, thank you for this situation. God, thank you for this situation. I mean, God, thank you for my, Lord, God, thank you for my day. Thank you for my family. Thank you for these people. Thank you for the guards. Lord, thank you for these prison cells. Lord, thank you for these nice chains. Lord, thank you for everything I got right now. Lord, I know you got my back. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paul and Silas were still thanking God. See, the miracle doesn't happen until they begin thanking. The miracle follows thanksgiving. Take a look at verse 25. Around midnight, it's always that midnight hour, that dark hour, that time no one's watching, the time no one else is around, that time where you're laying on your, your head on the pillow and the enemy wants to flood you with negative thoughts. He wants to flood you with depressing, angry, suicidal thoughts. The enemy wants to tempt you and say, just go back to the world. Or why don't you go back to the bottle or the drug? It's in that midnight hour. That's the time we need to be thanking God the loudest. That's the time we need to be speaking up in our heart and saying, no devil, I'm no longer going to pay attention and listen to all these negative things. I'm going to fix my eyes on the great things that God has done for me. And I'm going to continue to thank God for all the beautiful things things that are to come. I am done with the old. I'm ready for the new. So the miracle follows the thanksgiving. It says, Su uh, suddenly, so around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison, the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Immediately after, Paul and Silas begin giving God some praise and some thanks, a miracle happens. They are set free. And now, now this is what's not going to happen. Paul and Silas can't speak to the chains and complain about them. Paul and Silas can't go back to the angry mob and say, you guys all hurt my feelings. Paul and Silas can't go over to the jailers who beat them and say, you guys are rude to me. Paul and Silas can't do that and expect to be set free. No, instead, what they do is begin to sing praises to God and give God thanks in the low moments. I know it's tough. But come on, Christians, it's time for us to mature and stop having pity parties. Nobody likes going to those parties. They're the worst parties to have. We need to start throwing celebration parties. We need to start throwing Thanksgiving parties. We need to start throwing a party every single time the enemy tries to kick you. We're going to throw a party and give thanks to God. Every time the enemy tries to tear your family apart, we're going to give thanks to God and say, God, I know you're still in control. I know you still got my back. I know you still love me. I know you still got a plan. I'm still standing on your promise. Promises, I am not done, and I know you're not done. God, I thank you for the, for the, for the days to come. Thank God before you see the freedom. Thank God with faith that freedom is coming. Thank God before you see the miracle. Thank God before you see the fruit. Thank God before you see the, 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 the freedom. Thank God before you see the doors broken open. I know maybe someone in here feels like they got a cycle on their life and they keep going through it over and over, but it's time to stop believing in that cycle that it has you and there's no way out. This cycle doesn't have me. God has me. God, thankful. I thank you that you have my life. I thank you that your word says, who the sun sets free is free in Indeed. God, I thank you for my freedom, and I thank you for my breakthrough. But this is a great thing about this scripture, this little bonus, is that freedom didn't just come for Paul and Silas. But if you take a look in the, at that verse, it says that the, the, the prison doors, in verse 26, it says all the doors immediately flew, flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. 
You mean to tell me, hold up, you mean to tell me that my thankfulness to God could be so loud, it can cause such a huge echo, it can leave such a massive epicenter in the ground that people that are close to me will benefit from me thanking God? Whoa, 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 but God, they're, they're prisoners. They're, they did something bad. I, I know these guys are, these guys are for sure guilty, uh, but, but you mean to tell me that if I give thanks to God, that if I begin to lift his name up, that if I honor him and put him first before all things, that if I seek his will in my life, that I thank God, even though my family may be out in the streets right now, I thank God for their salvation, that somehow the people around me, my family that's not saved, my brother that's lost, my sister that's hurting, my dad who's forgotten me, my mom who abused me, my uncle who's over there, my son, my daughter. You mean those people could benefit from my thanks? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Come on, church. It's time for us to start thanking God, not just on our behalf, but on the behalf of the people that we love the most. It's time to start thanking God for their breakthrough, for their freedom. I'm looking at a room full of people who somebody was praying for. Somebody was thanking God in advance for your breakthrough. Somebody somewhere was thanking God that you're going to get saved one day. Somebody was thanking God for the chair you're going to sit in. Someone was thanking God for this building. I know Pastor Marco had a vision. His mom had a vision and was thanking God in advance before this building even came about. And because we thank God, we we didn't complain to God, God released the provision, God released the freedom, God released the miracle. There's a miracle that follows Thanksgiving. There's a breakthrough that follows Thanksgiving. Great things happen when people begin to thank God, even in the low moments. Amen? Let's go to the second point. Someone say thank you for providing. Thank you for providing. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 14 verses, we're going to start at verse 15. Matthew 14 verses 15 through 21. That evening the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Basically, the disciples are saying, this is someone else's problem, Jesus. Just, just let them take care of themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. Ooh. But, but, but there we go. Here goes a but. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. But we only have, but we only, but, but we only have five loaves and two fish. Jesus said, bring them here. You know what Jesus is thinking? Perfect, just enough. <laughs> then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Crazy two different responses. See, sometimes what you have may look like it's not enough. But with the not enough mentality, we're going to get not enough results. See, look, don't curse the seed that God gave you. Don't look at the seed and say, that's not enough, God. Don't look at what God put in your hands and say, God, this won't do it. I mean, who are we to say, tell God that? God, uh, the, the job you gave me, that's not going to cut it. I'm sorry. God, the life you gave me, it's not going to do it. God, the ministry you gave me, it's not going to do it. God, the things you gave me, it's not going to do it. I'm sorry, God, I'm going to need something different. Yikes. Got a little quiet. Not enough mentality. mentality. <clears throat> Metal, thank you, Pastor Marco. That's, that's why you're my pastor. Not enough mentality leads to discontentment and bitterness. See, it will cause us to put excuses in front of our miracle. With the not enough mentality, we say things like, well, I can't because, or we say things, well, I would do that, or I would go out, or I would go for that, or I would go for my degree, or I would, but it causes us to say things like, oh, I wish I had that, but 
It causes us to say things like, oh, if only I had more, if only there was enough. Oh, I guess we can't see a miracle today. See, if it was up to the disciples, they would have said, well, we only have five loaves and two fish. This is not enough. Oh, too bad, so sad. Send off all the people and let's miss the biggest miracle we can see in scripture. But Jesus said, what you have is just enough. It's the seed. As a matter of fact, I put that in your hands. And that's exactly the amount I wanted in your hands for, for what was to come. Jesus was thankful for the seed. Take a look at, go back to verse 18. He says, bring them here. He told the disciples, sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and, and the two fish, looked up to heaven and blessed them. He blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterwards the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. All of a sudden, huh? They want all the leftovers, but they didn't want to do all the work. Well, but look at the principle still applies here. Jesus was thankful, and his disciples were blessed. You see the pattern? Is that every time we're thankful, not only do we receive, but our families receive. Our disciples receive. Come on, our prior 12s receive. The people we're leading receive. Our workplaces receive, the ones we love receive. Every time we're thankful, the ones that are closest to us will receive a miracle and a breakthrough. We begin to see God move not just in our life, but it overflows. Why? Because a thankful heart is an overflowing heart. It just spills out wherever it goes. Jesus was thankful. Jesus, no matter how small the provision, he saw it as a seed for greater. Now the question for you is what seed did God put in your hand? Be thankful for it. Look at 1 Chronicles 29, verse 12. It says, wealth and honor come from you alone. Skim over to verse 13. It says, oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. Who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you. And we give you only what you gave us, what you first gave us. Being thankful for that tiny seed, it may look like not enough, but that led to a miracle that we still talk about today. Jesus fed 5,000 people with what everyone else would have saw as not enough. This Thanksgiving season, let's stop talking to our seeds as not enough. Let's stop speaking curses over the seed that God has for us. But instead, let's throw fertilizer on it with some thanksgiving. Let's see that seed prosper and blossom to some fruit and to some provision and to some restoration and to some breakthroughs in our life like we never seen before. By show of hands, how many can be thankful for what God has provided for them tonight? How many are thankful for the restoration? How many are thankful for the provision to come? By how many would say tonight, I need some provision. I know God has more in store for me. So no longer am I going to curse the little. I'm going to bless it and give God thanks for that. Because I know that it's the seed for the breakthrough. It's the seed for the harvest. And it's the seed for all the great things to come. How many believe that tonight? See, our joy, this is why our joy doesn't come from the provision though. But it comes from the provider. Our joy doesn't come from the blessing, it comes from the one who blesses us. It comes from our God being our great provider, the one who gives us everything that we need. Come on, someone give God some praise tonight for being, just for all the great things he's done for us. Third and final point, someone say this with me. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Turn with me to John chapter 11 verse 39. I'm going to read from 39 to verse 44. John 11, 39. It says, roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested. Lord, has he, he, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell's going to be terrible. Jesus responded. By the way, Jesus was not happy here. He was a little upset at everyone's lack of faith. Jesus responded. He said, didn't I tell you? that you would see God's glory if you believe? Ooh. Didn't I tell you that there were promises ahead? Didn't I already tell you, raise them up in the way that shall go and they will not depart? 
Come on, parents. I know you're praying for someone. I know you're praying for your son or daughter right now. Didn't I tell you for, about the promises I have for you? Didn't I tell you breakthrough is coming? Didn't I tell you that the miracle's in front of you? Didn't I tell you that you're the head and not the tail? Didn't I tell you that victory is in store for you? Didn't I tell you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Didn't I tell you that nothing is impossible with God? Didn't I tell you for all things are impossible through Christ who gives me? Didn't I speak these promises to you? You know why Jesus is saying this? Because sometimes, again, we take our attention off of the good and we put it back on the negative. And God is saying, didn't I already say? Didn't I already speak? And my word does not return to me void. If I said it, it's going to come to pass. Be thankful for the life that I'm about to restore in you. So he says, didn't I tell you this? So they rolled the stone aside. I'm sure they're all thinking, yikes, this is going to be bad. They rolled the stone aside. They're like, whew, this is going to stink. They rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. Every miracle follows thanksgiving. Every time God begins to do something new, there's a group of people that are thankful for what he has done. Church, Let's be thankful for what he has done. Come on. Let's be thankful. He says, so they rolled the stone aside. Jesus looked up and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here. Was, Jesus is funny. So that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. The real mummy, the real life mummy literally came out. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Look, nothing is impossible with God. I know Martha saw no possibility of return for her brother. I know that she, she was more interested in preventing the stone from rolling. Why? Because of the smell. But Jesus was interested in rolling the stone aside so we could see a miracle. I wonder how many of us are, are preventing a miracle from happening because we're more interested in such menial things in life. Oh, I don't want to look foolish or I don't want to step out in faith or I don't want to, I, I don't want, I don't know if I really trust what God is saying. But, but but Martha was trying to prevent, but Jesus said, no, not on my watch. I'm not going to let anything prevent this miracle from happening. God's going to get the glory from this. God, I thank you for hearing me. Watch what happens after. What are you preventing? Like Martha, she tried to prevent the stone from being rolled, but what are we preventing? Let's not stop God's will. See, we could be stopping a miracle from happening right before our eyes. And it all happens because we're just not very thankful. But Jesus, Jesus, he steps in. And again, nothing is impossible with God. The dead will come to life. The dead will come to life. See, sometimes we just need to be thankful. And we just need to be thankful that God even hears us. I love that Jesus prayed that. He didn't say, he didn't, this is what he said. God, thank you for hearing me. Thank you that you hear me. Sometimes we just need to remember that our Father loves us and he's listening to us. We need to be thankful that we have direct access to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We just need to be thankful that we can enter into his throne room at any moment's notice. We need to be thankful that we can say our, sing our praises to God and he joins us in that prayer room. We need to be thankful that our Father in heaven, although he could be doing a million other things, is dead set focused on you and thinks about no one else but you. He looks you right in the eye and there's no one else in the room except you. He loves you. He has a plan for you. He thinks about you more than you think about you because we know you think about you a lot. But God thinks about you way more than that. God loves you. He adores you. He has a plan for you. Let's be thankful that our Father in heaven loves us so much. And he's got a plan for us. And, and, and he, he hears us. He hears us. You know that prayer that you can't count how many times you've prayed? God, bring him home. God, bring her home. God, heal me. God, set me free. God, bless the business. God, do it in my life. 
You know that prayer you prayed a thousand and one times? God hears you. Someone here tonight just needs to hear that. God hears you. God is hearing your prayers. Let's just be thankful that he hears us. Thankful that he's listening to us. Thankful that he's watching over us. How many are thankful tonight? See, what dead situation needs to come to life within you? Worship team can come up. What dead situation needs to come to life within you? See, God's specialty is blowing everybody's mind. God's specialty is bringing dead things back to life. See, in Martha's eyes, her brother Lazarus was at the point of no return. Jesus, don't bother because he's so dead, you're gonna smell it all. The situation's so far gone, it just, it's not worth looking at. It's not worth paying attention to. I wonder if that's how sometimes we feel about our own spirits, about our own lives. I'm so far gone, I'm so lost, I'm so broken, I'm so deep within this. I just, I just have this stench, it's no bother. Just lock it up, throw the key away. There's no hope for me. Let God start by bringing our dead souls back to life, by thanking Jesus for giving up his life on the cross. The greatest miracle that's gonna happen tonight is to see somebody, someone's life transformed. And it's all gonna come from just thanking Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.